OLED versus full array LED. What is the difference? Is OLED really worth it? Let's find out. Hi guys, it's Jonathan from Smart Home Sounds here, a home audio visual retailer, and I'm back with another TV related video for you today. I'm gonna to be talking about OLED versus full array LED TVs, covering the key things you need to know, pros and cons for each, and how to decide which is right for you. So we've just had the new Sony Bravia XR A80J OLED TV arrive at the office, and while we've still got the Sony Bravia XR X90J full array LED TV in the studio, I thought it'd be a great chance to really delve into into the differences between OLED and full array LED to help you decide which to go for and understand the differences between them. Now these two models aren't necessarily two that you would be choosing between, so the X90J is the entry level full array LED with the actually the X95J being the flagship full array LED model in Sony's 2021 range. However, as the A80J is the entry level OLED this year, they are still great for the purposes of this video. So if you've not checked out our X90J review Yet, yet, I'll link that below and make sure you subscribe for more content like this and to catch our full review of the A80J coming very soon. Don't forget we are an official Sony retailer so if you need any more personal advice then do get in touch and I'll link the products below if you want to see more including the most up-to-date pricing and offers. Okay then let's get into it. Right, so have you been able to guess which of these TVs is the full array LED and which is the OLED TV? Well, if you weren't sure, so this one is the OLED TV, the A80J, and this one is the X90J full array LED. And apologies about the slight difference in height between them, they both come with different stands, it annoys me too, but I'll just blame that on the editors. Now, the majority of this video will be about OLEDs and full array LED TVs in general, with these two models highlighting the key features and differences. However, stick around till the end of the video where I'll give you a bit more info on these models in particular. And just so you're aware, these are both 65 inch sets. And also just so you're aware, we haven't touched any of the picture settings. They are as, uh, as they came, the factory settings, just so you can get an equal baseline of both. First things first, let's just redefine what OLED and LED means for those who aren't too sure or just need a reminder. So both refer to the type of panel of the TV. So LED is the more traditional type of panel and there are a few different variations. So LED stands for light emitting diode and these refer to TVs with a thin layer of liquid crystals sat between transparent glass panels. The crystals might form the image but they can't produce any light themselves and therefore all LED TVs are backlit by small bright LEDs. The crystals then act like shutters or eyelids, um, for want of a better visual, either blocking out the light or allowing it to pass through. One variation is edge-lit LEDs, where the LEDs sit at either the sides of the panel, the top and bottom, or just the bottom. Now these TVs can be thinner, but they aren't normally as good when it comes to contrast, as the light can sometimes bleed through, stopping there from being true blacks. The next option is direct lit LED TVs, which have a grid of LEDs across the whole back of the panel. However, there aren't a huge number of LEDs, around 100 or so, and they can't be independently controlled. Again, not the best for dark blacks and deep contrast. The final option, and the one that we'll focus on today, is full array LED, so the top tier of LED TVs, and that's as close as you can get to OLED without paying OLED prices. Now these TVs also have a grid of LEDs behind the panel, but this time there are hundreds of LEDs and they can be controlled in zones. Now this means you can get much better contrast ratios and even deeper blacks. The best of these TVs also offer full array local dimming, which is found in the majority of Sony's models. Local dimming dims blacklist zones, which helps the contrast ratio, particularly in dark scenes, making blacks appear deeper and brightening highlights. On the other hand, we have OLED TVs, a newer type of TV panel introduced to the market in around 2013. OLED stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode and these don't require any type of backlight as the diodes emit their own light and they can turn themselves off completely which means that you can get pure blacks and almost perfect contrast ratios. These panels, while more simple in theory, are a lot more expensive to manufacture which we will come back to in a bit. Sony actually buy their OLED panels from LG but it's then the processing behind the TV which gives it that distinct Sony picture quality. So that's full array LED and OLED in a nutshell. It's important to remember that a lot of the end result and picture quality comes down to the video processing. This is all taken care of before the signal even reaches the panel. 
It's important to note for our comparison and demonstration purposes that both of these TVs have Sony's new for 2021 Bravia XR processor. There are some differences in the technology available on both these TVs, but they are both powered by the same processor. So let's go over some of the key categories then to consider when buying a TV and weigh up the pros and cons for both types of TV. So we'll cover picture quality, contrast, color, brightness, etc., off-axis viewing, gaming compatibility, prices, and screen sizes. So first things first, the main pro for OLED is that they're able to produce true blacks and therefore offer a very impressive contrast ratio. Contrast is so important for picture quality. It stops the image from looking washed out and it helps the colors pop off the screen. LEDs typically struggled more with blacks and contrast, however more recently manufacturers have been working on this and creating some very competitive results. In particular, more premium full array LEDs like the X90J for example are capable of producing actually very dark blacks and good contrast ratios. If we look here you can see the contrast and blacks are far deeper and darker on the OLED. There's more range in the blacks which offers a more realistic uh, viewing experience. So in this clip I'm about to show you, this will highlight the difference in the wider range of black colors that you get in the OLED model compared with the full array LED model here. You can see here you've got a little bit of gray banding um, and then on the OLED you can see that it is just pitch black. Um, and the, the beauty of that is that on the OLED it will draw your attention to what, what else is going on on the screen and just help the whole thing to become more immersive and more true to life and ultimately feel like you're more at the cinema. So in terms of brightness, traditionally LEDs can produce brighter images and it's something that OLED TVs have always struggled with. So Sony have worked a lot on this and the A80J produces a bright picture and it can throw out a lot of light. The A80J is bright for an OLED, but overall you can definitely see the difference. One of the key things to highlight with picture quality is that OLEDs are better in a dark or dim room. So if you know you watch a lot of movies in the evenings, then you're going to prefer the experience you get on an OLED. On the other hand, LEDs perform better in a bright room, so for daytime viewing or if you have a bright room, you're going to get a brighter image from LEDs. Now, this doesn't mean that an OLED will look bad during the day, and the 2021 Sony OLEDs prove this assumption is slowly being eradicated, and likewise, the LED is no good for watching movies in the dark. If we look at the colors on both of these TVs, I'm happy with both in general. I think if you were to look at an LED TV that's lower down in the range, you would find the colors aren't as rich. Um, however, the X90J produces a wide range of colors which are vivid and lifelike. I think it's the black levels and the deeper contrast on the A80J which helps the colors pop off just that little bit more. Here you can see the individual blades of grass a little bit more clearly, a bit more sharper on the OLED. The green just feels a little bit more green on the OLED. And then this building here looks a little bit different um, in terms of a yellowy color on the OLED. And the roof tiles again on the OLED, uh, it's a little bit more gray where it's a little bit more pink on the full array. If we take a look more generally at the overall picture quality from both of these TVs, when I've got them side by side like this, I do think the OLED has the edge. It's quite difficult to explain without you being here with me and seeing for yourself, and I'm not sure how well this is going to come across on video, but in our studio, the overall picture quality is richer on the A80J and just that more lifelike. So straight away you can see how much the greens pop on the OLED compared to the full array LED. Everything is a lot more vibrant, it's more rich, it just makes that um, forest look a lot more appealing and a lot more inviting. Um, not to say that this doesn't look um, good but it's just when you put it next to the OLED you can certainly see the differences. So moving on from the picture then, another element to consider is how these TVs perform in off-axis viewing angles. So this isn't the easiest thing to demonstrate in our fairly narrow studio, but the X90J is not as good for wide angle viewing. It's not unwatchable, but the blacks start to get washed out and the picture is not hugely enjoyable if you were to be sat at a wider angle. LEDs in general are designed to be watched head on in the sweet spot and anyone sat up to about 30 degree angle will experience no issues but if you do have very wide off axis seating you might find your viewing experience is affected. Some LED TVs have technology to offset this. The X95J TV for example has X wide angle viewing technology so look out for that if you know this could be an issue for your setup. 
Alternatively, OLED TVs tend to perform much better in this scenario, and there's not a huge difference in the viewing experience whether you're sat off axis or straight on. So let's move on to gaming then. So both of these TVs offer 120 Hertz refresh rate, support for HDMI 2.1, and down the line will offer VRR support. As a result, I think gamers would be happy with either of these models. Both full array LEDs and OLEDs can be great for gaming. However, OLEDs typically offer a faster response time. So if you're wanting the very best gaming performance, you might lean towards OLED. If the price of OLED takes these out of your budget, you can still get a full array LED that's great for gaming, though just look out for those refresh rates, HDMI 2.1 support, and features like ALLM and VRR. One key difference between OLEDs and full array LEDs is the screen sizes available and the price tags. So as I mentioned at the start, OLED panels are more expensive to manufacture and therefore come with a higher price tag. They tend to be at the top of a brand's TV range in terms of pricing. If we look at Sony's lineup, at the top is their 8K TV and then their flagship OLED TV, the A90J, followed by the A80J that we have here. The full array LED TVs tend to have a lower price tag with the X95J being the next in the lineup, followed by the X90J that I have here. I'll pop up the price comparison between the entry level full array LED X90J and the entry level OLED A80J here for you. In terms of screen sizes, you tend to have more options if you go for LED, with OLED sticking with 55 inch, 65 inch, and 75 or 77 inch sizes. For example, I think the 50 inch X90J will be popular this year, especially for gaming. So in terms of design, as OLEDs tend to be the more premium option, they often come with a more premium appearance. So if we look at these two models, we have a thinner bezel on the A80J. It's a much slimmer screen and the overall build quality is better on the OLED. The materials are also more premium on the A80J. That doesn't mean that you can't get um, more premium looking LEDs though, and this X90J still looks great and both can be wall mounted. Of course, there'll be lots of other things that will impact your purchase decision, including sound quality if you don't have a soundbar or sound setup for your TV. But in general, hopefully that's helped highlight the key differences between OLED and full array LED, and maybe helps you with your decision on which will be best for you. Don't forget, a lot of the end result is down to the video processing. So that's something else that you can look into to help you make your decision, and also check for extra features such as that extra wide angle technology, ambient modes, and things like that. It's definitely not a one-size-fits-all. There's a lot of different factors to consider, including different brands, models, etc. But you can try and narrow down your search a bit on whether you think you want OLED or full array LED. There is a thousand pound price difference between these two models and that just can't be overlooked. I think it comes down to whether you are willing to pay that extra money to access the better picture quality found in the A80J. As we've said, there are other features that you do get with the A80J, and that includes a far superior sound performance thanks to Acoustic Audio Plus, where the screen itself is actually the speaker. I personally think that once you've experienced OLED, it is hard to go back to full array LED, as good as I think that this TV is. However, if you're not used to OLED and you were seeing this X90J for the first time, I don't think that you'll be disappointed. So to sum up, ultimately, yes, OLED does offer a superior performance, albeit with a premium price tag. And if you want the best TV viewing experience and have the budget, I genuinely believe you will see the value in the price jump. Alternatively, the experience you get from LED is also improving and that offers great value for money. So that summary probably hasn't helped, but this is a very personal decision and hopefully this video has helped you in some way. As ever, if you've got any questions, then feel free to comment below and we'll try and get back to you. Alternatively, get in touch via email, phone or live chat and someone will be more than happy to help you out. I've linked both these TVs below if you want to find out more and they do come with a five year warranty too, so you know you're covered with your decision. Please subscribe if this video has helped and give me a like, that always helps. See you next time.